<sighs> well, there goes the season. First of all, congratulations, Kansas City. Uh, go beat the Bills. You know, I mean, that's, that's all I can hope for. Go take care of the Bills and then go lose to the Ravens. And we're all good. We Dolphins fans, we do. Okay, like, yeah, let's be honest. All right, and I, this is me completely being honest here. We're not built to beat a team like Kansas City at Kansas City as pres um, presently constructed. Let me put that in easier words for y'all. We injured. We wasn't beating Kansas City as injured as we was. Like, we weren't on defense. Defense did about as good as you could have ever hoped holding Kansas City to 26 points. They did about as good as you could have ever hoped. That offense did they they wasn't they wasn't there to play. Alright, now if you want to blame it on the running game not getting going at all, or McDaniel's ineptitude in his play calling, or to a stupid interception, or some of the inaccurate short passes that he had because of the weather, or what have you, right? Take your pick. Or on Christian Wilkins on defense, not understanding the moment, right? Which would have been a fourth and 20. Now it's first down. And then they score a touchdown on that drive. Whatever you want to blame, right? We're not on Kansas City's level when it comes to playoffs. We're not there. That's not who we are just yet. Maybe we get there. More than likely, we don't, okay? Because I just don't see how Tua gets us over the hump. He didn't prove to me today that I should have any different feelings than what I had last week. Tua is an above-average quarterback that needs everything around him to be good, and then he could be along for the ride and possibly not mess it up for you. But he ain't winning you nothing. That's who Tua is right now. Now, I don't believe that that's going to change. But definitely, Tua can go into the offseason, fix certain things. All right? He fixed the injury issues. So maybe he can go in the offseason, fix certain things, and be better for it next year. And cool. If he changes my mind, cool. No problem. Not worried about it. Now, some of y'all might be worried, wondering why I ain't all extra hype on this video. If you watched my preview video, I said this all last week of football. Now, I went out on my shield, right? Like like a good, a good old boy, like a good Finns fan. I went out on my shield. You know, I, I, I picked my team to win, although I knew there was maybe a 1% chance that that could ever happen in this game. Picked us to win, we lost. Am I upset? No, I knew we were gonna lose. So of course I'm not upset about the loss. This is not one of those types of videos. I was upset about them last two. This one, not so much, not so much. Uh, it's Kansas City in the freezing cold, a day house. We weren't winning this game. Let's, let's be honest, guys. We we weren't winning this game. All right, whether we lost by a point or we lost by 16 or whatever it was, we weren't winning this game. All right, so that's that. And actually, we lost by way more than 16, by the way. But that's that. Uh, good game. Kansas City. Go lose to the Ravens. Uh, in a couple weeks, and then all balance because y'all need to know the championship. Let's be honest. 
All right, y'all need no other championships right now. Let the Ravens go get one. Or San Francisco, better yet. Prove that this system can actually win something if you, you know, get to a certain level. Because they got the same type of system as us. Maybe a little bit better decision-making quarterback. Although he did throw five, four picks the last time he played a competent defense. But I digress. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, go 49ers. All right, so let's talk about this game a little bit. We got some problems. They ain't good. Mike McDaniel started the year out hot as a coordinator slash coach. Play calling was mwah, chef kiss. They were just killing teams. Now, I know we was playing sorry teams, in a sense, but we were destroying them. Other teams were playing them, and they couldn't destroy them the way we were destroying them. We started out the year with them short motions and this and that, and we were the rave of the town, number one offense, running and passing the ball. It was just bonkers. Same kind of thing that happened last year. And just like last year, the offense stalled and could never pick it back up. Now, last year we thought it was because Tua was out. Right? That was the thing. Oh, when Tua comes back, that won't happen. When Tua comes back, blah, 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 blah. All right? We go 9-8 and eight last year, make the playoffs. This year, we go 11-6. and six. We're number six seed instead of number seven like we were last year. But at the end of the day, results still the same. We're out of the playoffs first round. Because the offense couldn't get it together. And it's because, in part, Mike McDaniel's play calling and game planning is a little bit suspect. Once they figure him out. All right, now, this is two years in a row where the Dolphins have brought something new to the table on offense. Okay? Last year was the first time you saw McDaniel's offense, so... You didn't know what to expect until you knew what to expect. And then it was a wrap from there. This year, he added little wrinkles, right? These little new things. And then you have a new little guy in A-Chan who's fast as heck. And, and they had some certain plays for him. And, and, and they got most or more involved. They got the run game more involved, right? Uh, like he said he would. And that helped. And they found he like he's a mastermind, right? Like he he's a master uh, 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 at his craft. And he... Figure certain things out to exploit defenses overall. When that stuff stopped working, the offense had nothing. Okay? That needs to be fixed. McDaniel, listen. Yes, you are a good coach. Yes, you are a good offensive play calling creator. But what you're not good at is learning when to stop doing certain things and just start running a regular offense, okay? That is where you're struggling at. You keep running these gadget plays and this gadget offense, and it's not working anymore. So you have to have a bread and butter offense that can get you 10 to 15 yards, five yards, whatever have you, right? A progression-based offense where if number one's not open, go to number two, the number three, the number four, then you're hot or you're hot and whatever, right? That type of offense built into this system as your base and as your core, all right? And then add in all the extras on top of it, the motions, the this and that, all right? Because those things are important and they make you who you are, but that can't be the base, because if that's the base and they take it away, what do you have? Nothing. That's what we have seen for the last three, four games. We've seen nothing, okay, on offense. We've been struggling for a while now. Matter of fact, we've been struggling since the Washington game on offense. That was the last good game we had on offense. After that, it's just been trash. And before that, we had some trash games too. All right, so 
We got to fix this. I know you're going to be back. I know Tua's going to be back. Doesn't matter to me at this point uh, that Tua's going to be back because I expect it. All right? I'm not going to get mad. None of y'all should either that Tua gets signed for $40 million or $50 million or whatever they sign him for. Don't be upset. Y'all know it should be coming because Tua did throw up really good numbers this year under this offense. Let's not act like he didn't do that. Now, do we believe necessarily that he can get us over the hump? No. But he's still an upper half of the league quarterback. He's still a top 10 quarterback on paper. So he's going to get paid accordingly. Now, I wouldn't pay him. I'd make him play on the fifth-year option. He won't like that much. Maybe he holds out, whatever. I'll draft a guy, and if that guy's better than you, you know what I'm saying? That's me. Team's probably not going to do that in, in, in good faith. They're probably not going to do that. So, whatever. Have the, the, Cool. Tua needs to fix his issues. One, we're going to play in cold games. And if we're not planning on playing in cold games, then we need to plan on going undefeated, right? So, one thing or another has to come. We, we have to be able to win. Um, during the regular season at a higher clip than we're winning right now, or Tua needs to be a lot better in these cold games because there's going to be plenty more to come. So, pick your pick. Or, there's always option C, get a different quarterback. Since option C is probably not on the table, then one of the other two needs to happen. Either we need to start winning in the regular season at a higher clip, meaning we need to win 13 or 14 games to ensure that we get a number one or number two seed, and only have to play that tough game on the road in the championship, or two needs to be a lot better in the cold. I don't even know which one is more probable. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, but Tua got to be better. Tua, Tua, come on. Tua, you got to be better than that. All right? Now, the deep ball to Tyreek, I'm not going to sit here and – Oh, the ball was severely in the throne. Did y'all see the kicks today? They was trying to boot them things into the end zone. They was going to the 20 yard line. You expect a deep ball going in that direction, uh, which the wind was against um, too well on that play. You expect that to be an in stride touchdown. If you were expecting that, you don't know football. Plain and simple. That was going to be, unless you didn't know nothing about the wind that I'm telling you now for the first time in your, this is the first time knowing that they were against the wind, they were against the wind on that play. All right, I'm letting you know now. There was no way that they were going to complete that ball in stride 50 yards in the air. That, that wasn't happening. All right, good throw, good adjustment, good run after the catch for Tyreek Hill. I know some people will be like, round of no, it ain't gonna be no rounds of applause today. All right, but I'm also not doing any blank stares either. Why? Because I expected this. Why am I blank staring a team when I expected the outcome? All right, now I could blank stare Christian Wilkins. All right, I, I could definitely do that because my God, you can't have those stupid plays. But I'm not going to do that either, all right? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a video talking about what's next for the Miami Dolphins, right? Uh, because, boy, they, they, a lot needs to change, and I don't have enough time in this video to talk about it. Um, when it comes to our defense, let me talk about them real quick. There have been no break. I, I, I don't like it. All right. First and foremost, I got a problem with this. We blitz way more today than we've blitzed all year. It's Pat Mahomes. You don't blitz Pat Mahomes like that. Now, I understand it worked to some effect. But. On the third downs, when we was blitzing, they knew it was coming. They had the answers, okay? That's not good, especially when you're going to play off coverage. Now, here's my problem. 
third and four, third and six, right? You send a blitz. But you play it off by 10 yards. Y'all see where I could have an issue at? If you're blitzing, zero uh, 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 cover zero blitz, you're bringing uh, more than they can block, and you're playing 10 yards off, and they're automatically going to a hot read, then guess what? That person's going to be wide open because you're already playing 10 yards off. You're backing up at the snap, and they're throwing hot. What sense does that make? Play man to man bump and run. If you get beat over the top, that's the that's the risk you take. You're taking a risk anyway. Something I've said before. You're taking the risk anyway. Zero blitzing Pat Mahomes. Man up. And if you get beat over the top, you get beat over the top. Man up, bump and run. That's it. Now, if there's a hot. Maybe he can't hit the guy as well. Maybe the ball's a little behind. What have you because he's trying to throw it into a tighter window. You didn't even give him that option of throwing it into a... Or you, you didn't give him that possibility of it being a tighter window because you're 10 yards off anyway. I got a problem with that. We got to fix that when it comes to the defense. This zone 10 yards off stuff don't work for me overall. And now I know we had a, some backups in, and Cole, who fell off the face of the earth from last year, he just ain't the same. And we were missing pass rushers like crazy. But the defense still gave us a chance other than those things that I saw on third down that were an issue. Run game, tackling, yeah, that was an issue as well. I mean, we held them on the run for the most part, but when it came to tackling, we just didn't want to tackle. Maybe it was too cold. I wasn't out there. I wouldn't be out there. But maybe it was too cold for them boys to tackle. I don't know. But we got some stuff to clean up. Vic Fangio's probably going to be back. They better fire um, um, Crossman or whatever his name is. He got to go. Because the punter and the, the punter got to go. We should have never let go of our punter from last year. At all. This punter is trash. All right. He's garbage. Like, this, the dude can't punt. We got to move on from him. Sanders, I'm cool, cool Sanders. Sanders, Sanders, he's he back in my good graces. He found this foot. I don't have a problem with Sanders. But I definitely got a problem with the punter and the special teams coach. Both of them got to go. If we can go get Darren Rizzi back and pay him a boatload of money, do that. Do what you got to do. This was a tough loss. Of course, although I expected it, it still hurts to lose because you're a fan, right? You're hoping and wishing that you could get this one. But, I mean, we were going up against Kansas City to defend the Super Bowl champions at their house in the freezing cold. We would have had to have been 100% healthy to have a chance to win. And it still would have been a, a small chance, right? So, that's just how it rolls against a Pat Mahomes-led team. That's why he that dude. I'll holler at y'all in the next one. Y'all already know what it is. Fans up till we die. We still repping our squad no matter what. I'll see y'all next year. Hey, you never know, man. You never know. Anything can happen. Maybe they're a beast next year, right? And we make it all the way. You never know, all right? I'll holler at y'all. It's going to be a fun offseason. I got plenty of videos coming to y'all, you know what I'm saying? I'm sorry for some of y'all that came over here that are Ravens fans or KC fans or or uh, Dallas Cowboy fans, whatever fans, Buffalo Bills fans that enjoy the energy I give after a post game or during a post game video. This ain't one of those, unfortunately. All right, you know, but still hope you liked it. I'm out.